Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor, and today I want to talk about Dave's superpowers and their concept of tribe versus self. And a lot of you have asked me questions about this concept and what I think about it and how useful I think it is to predicting your personality type. And let me first say I believe tribes and the concept of the tribe and self is very positive. I believe it's a very good thing to bring in personality, in perspective of our concept of self and our concept of other. I believe uh, everyone has a special relationship to the tribe or the group. Everyone has a different relationship and perspective on what the group needs and what the group values and what the, is important and most important to the group. I believe that... <laughs> INFJ's perspectives on the tribe is going to be slightly different from the ENFJ's or the INFP's perspective on the tribe. And I think um, in this video what I want to do is I want to go over some of the different perspectives on tribes from the different personality types as far as I've seen it. And then I will ask myself at the end of the video what do I think is the general pattern. So. I believe uh, as an INFJ that my concept of the tribe is I have to, well, earn my worth to the group constantly. I have to prove my worth and my value to the group. I have to uh, bring something good to the group. I have to be responsible for the group and for the general group harmony. I have to be responsible for the emotional needs of everyone in the group. That means when somebody is struggling in the tribe or in the group, I believe I am responsible for this person and their feelings and their ability to coexist with the tribe. If there is a conflict between two people in the group, I believe I have to mediate this conflict and make things better. A lot of those perspectives can be found in feeling and judging, but another part, and I think part that truly illuminates that I'm an introvert, is uh, my perspective is on the individual in the tribe, the individuals of the tribe. I don't see the tribe as one coherent being. I don't see the tribe as a, a group. I don't think of the workplace uh, values or the group's values or the political party's uh, beliefs. I think about the people in the political party and their beliefs and I think about uh, the individuals that are make that make out the tribe as a whole. It is um, my focus is on the one-on-one -on -one interactions with the people of the tribe and supporting and coaching them and helping them get along better with one another, thinking of and helping them understand one another. My focus is on introspection. Why is this person upset? What makes this person upset? What is this person's struggle and how can I help them guide them through this struggle? A part of how I see tribe and how I see the group is uh, I see myself as uh, the person who is responsible for the general well-being of the group and of the overall <laughs> ethical guidance of the group, group and of uh, the emotional support and the communication with the group. I see myself as the spokesperson for the individual in the group. So the person that has to speak up for other people and help them out and make sure their issues and concerns are responded and understood by others. I see myself as the translator of other people. So when other people are upset and other people don't understand, I see myself as the person that has to translate this to other people. If you contrast this position against, for example, the ESTP's position on the tribe, you get a vastly different role and vastly different the perspective. I believe the extroverted perceiving type sees themselves as the person that has to explain to the group what is happening. They have to explain to everyone what is going on. They have to share with everyone what is happening. What is life? What are we doing? Why are we here? What is, are we working on right now? They are the gatherers and the people that bring forward information about reality and of the world as a whole. They explain to us all what is it that is going on. They show us what options we have, what uh, resources we have available, and what we can do with these resources. They show us what is can be done better, what is going badly, what could be done better, what could be improved, what could be done differently. Often I think the ESTP sees themselves as the person who is responsible for overall diagnostics 
the analytics, the data. They have to explain the data to everyone. They have to explain the statistics, the numbers, and they have to explain to people where the data is wrong and where we are struggling and where we can improve and where we are doing badly. So often they see the issues, they see we are not meeting these numbers, we're failing to hit these targets, we are uh, behind on that resource, we need more of this, we need less of that. They see in that sense uh, themselves as the bringers of the data, the bringers of the facts, the people that put the facts on the table when everyone else is uh, scattered about or ignorant in a sense. Because everyone else is, to some extent, appears to be oblivious to the data, oblivious to the facts. They don't know what's going on. They don't realize what's happening. They don't see necessarily what is uh, relevant to focus on right now, what our attention should be on, what we should focus on, where we're at at this moment. They're too caught up in future long-term possibilities and they miss out on current trends and what's the current numbers are saying. With uh, perceiving and judging, often uh, the general movement is towards uh, either chaos or order. As the INFJ archetype, you're constantly pulled towards uh, the social and intellectual order of the world. As an ESTP, you're constantly pulled towards uh, uh, the empirical and factual and rational chaos of the group. Their focus is on chaos rather than order and on numbers that not necessarily fit in any context, that don't necessarily relate to any of the goals that we are currently working towards. The numbers are the numbers. Everything is relevant. Every piece of data is important. Every piece of information matters. There is no necessary context to the ESTP in the group. They, they don't necessarily see themselves as uh, a part of the group. They don't necessarily see themselves as a part of some kind of social order. They see themselves as the people that will speak the truth and will say what is right, even if the tribe is against it. So, in, to some extent, uh, the gatherers are also the distributors. And, uh, in a sense, they are the people that give the information and they are the messengers. And they are sometimes the messengers of bad news. And they are also they also see themselves and feel quite good in this role as the people that will say what is necessary, what has to be said, even if it's going to spark conflict or tension in the group, even if it's gonna upset some people or hit some nerves or uh, get uh, uh, the group in some kind of disharmony or temporary dysfunction. So. Often uh, on its own, it's a movement towards chaos, you know, the breaking down of the social glue that keeps us all together, the breaking down of the intellectual glue and the vision that we're all moving towards. There is uh, always a new pattern and there's always new data and the rules are only guidelines and everything is just a matter of discussion and anything in any moment can be changed and what is happening in the moment is more important than our long-term goals as a group or our overall intellectual pursuits or our uh, social values or norms that we all have agreed upon. If the data is disagreeing with or goes against the overall harmony of everyone, the ESTP has to say so and has to speak up and let everyone know. <laughs> so there is a movement here towards either chaos or order. And you see this very strongly in perceiving and judging types in a group. You know, The perceiving types tend to break down groups. The judging types tend to build groups. And that's how you can tell uh, often uh, how judging types tend to become the leaders of groups, the people that build groups, build a social atmosphere, build uh, uh, like a rational reason for us all to work together. They form agreements between people, they form rules that we all have to abide by, they form some kind of disciplines that we all have to follow, they form some kind of intellectual guidelines for how to work together and how to get things done and for what we are all working towards. 
So it makes sense then that perceiving types can uh, sometimes see themselves kind of antagonistically towards the tribe. It makes sense then that a lot of perceiving types feel uh, they are against the group or against the tribe or that the tribe is against them or that the group is against them, that people are enforcing rules on them or trying to control them or trying to discipline them or trying to bring them in their scope of control. And so the perceiving type has to assert early that, yeah, I'm my own person, sorry, you cannot just tell me what to do, you cannot just uh, control me or micromanage me. Often uh, when I talk with perceiving types, uh, general issue is they are all kind of upset over having felt micromanaged by their bosses or by other people. They dislike being told what to do, they dislike when other people are interfering in their process, they dislike when other people are trying to assert their social norms and social values on them. It's a general thing where INTPs will say, uh, will have a general point of skepticism against everything that is social in its nature. Why should I dress like that? Why does everyone have to do this? Why do I have to follow these rules and norms and practices? Why do I have to go along with this? And uh, it makes sense as well why INFPs can feel uh, why don't uh, why don't people ever support me? Why don't people ever let me be myself? Why don't people ever let me do things my own way? Why don't people ever respect my individuality? Why do everyone why is everyone always trying to change me? I think as a judging type, you tend to see yourself as naturally the spokesperson or. Uh, of the group, you tend to see yourself as a person who is managing the group and leading the group or guiding the group or sh- shepherding the group. Uh, you're, the, you're the shaman, you're the boss, you're the uh, social glue, you're the organizer, you're the host, the person that is bringing everyone together to uh, work together, to have fun together or to uh, play together. You know, you're, you're the, No matter what, you take that role and you naturally find yourself drawn to it. I see uh, judging types thriving in these positions. But it has to be said, you know, when it has to do with introversion and extroversion, that uh, introversion and extroversion changes your overall perspective or feeling of your role in this group and in this tribe. So as an introvert, uh, it's natural to be quite... And in an unhealthy manner, self-absorbed or self-oriented. I think uh, the focus is on individuals rather than groups, on a person rather than on a project, on a, a personal viewpoint or a personal perspective rather than a system or a society or a human collective. There is no collective, there is no collective view, there is no collective values, there are no collective rules, no um, combined projects, no communities. Uh, In the unhealthy view, I think the introvert tends to take a position where none of these things exist or are valuable or have any inherent information or things. Everyone is just an individual. Everyone in the community is just a community is just a group of people, of individuals that are in some form, way or form um, cooperating or doing things together. So the individual, the person is the most important. The community as a whole is of less importance. So you're constantly focusing on supporting the pillars that hold up the house. If you put it metaphorically you see yourself as the person that yeah when one person is struggling the whole house risks falling down so you have to make sure everyone is able to hold themselves up and that everyone is able to uh, survive or support themselves and that every point of the plan is working out you know you, you have the INTJ that's like is every da- single data point adding up is every single point of information every person doing what they are supposed to do uh, and uh, that's that uh, focus on the parts rather than on the holes. The introverts focus on the parts, the extroverts focus on the holes. So that's also why I think extroverts tend to talk about us as uh, us, as a whole, as everyone, as we. What are we doing as a society? What are, uh, how are we living together as a community? What, is, what are we doing as a humanity or as a tribe or as a group as a whole.
Still, I think the extroverted perceiving type uh, can see themselves as, uh, and I, I brush this off with the ESTP as the uh, chaotic aspects of the community, the uh, adaptable aspects of the community, the parts of the community that are oriented towards chaos rather than discipline or order. The extroverted perceiving types, they see themselves as the people that uh, uh, focus on the overall whole and on the overall new data, new information, the new possibilities, new options emerging off the whole. So to them the tribe is constantly changing, the world is constantly changing, the whole is constantly being reformed and there are multiple aspects of this all happening together. Where I think, yes, the extroverted judging type, it's a joint effort, a cause, a tribe working together to do something. Everyone here at our company, everyone here at our workplace, everyone, we are now going to do this together. So there is an effort to communicate, to translate, to uh, pr uh, put up projects, to organize everyone, to rally everyone, to get everyone working on the same thing and going the same way and doing things the same way where for an extroverted perceiving type it's an effort of spreading in a sense uh, spreading the chaos uh, spreading the options spreading the alternatives uh, showing all the different things everyone can do showing all the different parts you know you can do this and you can do that and we can do work on this and we can work on that and then and we can go this way that's part of uh, building multiple holes and making them all work together, connecting all the parts of everyone and give, distributing roles, distributing information, making sure everyone knows what's going on everywhere, making sure everyone is informed, making sure everyone has the right information, making sure everyone is up to date, uh, everyone knows what is happening, everyone knows what the weather is looking like right now, everyone knows what the numbers and statistics are saying at the moment. So everyone feels they have something to do, something they can contribute with, something that uh, they can do together. Something I think would be very fascinating would be if we could sum up and start to map out how healthy our perspectives are on the tribe and on the group. And I think some basic starting points to ask yourself is, do I believe overall that the, tr uh, the group and the tribe is with me or do I believe the group and the tribe is against me? Do I believe I have a worth or value to the tribe or group or do I believe that I lack a point or purpose in the group? Do I feel I have a role or something I can contribute to the group or do I feel that I lack a role or place in the group and in the tribe and community as a whole? Do I feel connected to the group as a group or do I feel like an outsider or do I feel alienated from the group? I think all those things uh, matter because when you think about it, for example, I'm a YouTuber, I depend on the support of the group, I depend on people to tune into my videos and to like what I do. I, If I feel unhealthy or unstable, my whole perspective on the group will change. I will believe that nobody cares, I will believe that nobody wants to listen, I will believe that that uh, everyone is disagreeing with me and that nobody understands what I'm saying, you know. As an INFJ, you can escalate on those levels of help from, you know, believing that uh, you are fundamentally misunderstood, nobody will ever get you, nobody is ever going to understand you, or when you climb on the help levels, believing you are the translator, believing you are the person that is uh, being able to communicate universal truths and facts of life and uh, show perspectives that have previously gone missed. And... Uh, those things matter because without a solid and healthy point of view and framework on the group, we feel fundamentally incapacitated. We feel fundamentally in conflict with the group or we feel incapacitated by the group. We feel we cannot contribute, we cannot share, we cannot do anything if the group is present. We feel if we, the group is present, we have to constantly fight our way through the group. We have to fight to get our way. Nobody is on our side, so we have to fight or constantly be in conflict or be upset. Or the group uh, will win or will conquer us or will force their way on us against our will. So fundamentally, 
the concept of the tribe and of the self is very important and uh, I hope to keep revisiting this topic and I hope to keep explaining this because I think it can explain some fundamentally very interesting things about our personality types. Thanks everyone for tuning in and hope to see you all in the next video.